Well, ever since President Trump described the supposedly dreadful immigrant situation in Sweden, journalists at every media outlet from here to Malmo have been debating how bad things really are there. They're fine, say a lot of them. Well, Katie Hopkins works as global columnist for the Daily Mail. Rather than going on Wikipedia or reading some Vox article to learn what to think, as most do, she decided to actually go to the country. She went to Rinkby in Sweden, in the immigrant dominated suburb of Stockholm that was torched by rioters last week. What did she find? Katie Hopkins joins us now. Katie, thanks for coming on. Uh, first of all, good Thank for you, you for, for actually me. going. You always learn a lot when you get on a plane and go to the site. What did you expect to find and how did it differ from what you found? You know, I expected to find what a lot of people have been saying. It's like there's nothing wrong. Sweden's beautiful. I live here. I see none of this. You know, I expected to see the Sweden, I imagine, from maybe Christmas cards or whatever. But, you know, when I got there, it's a very different story. Within 10 hours of landing, an asylum center was burnt down, arson suspected. There was a hand grenade planted in a bin. And when I rushed there to find out what had gone on, um, I was told, well, why, why politicize this? Journalists are blamed, you know. Why make this a political thing? Why can't it just be a hand grenade in a bin outside a police station in a mosque? And I kind of fit, felt like, oh, who's the mad one here, me or you? And then speaking to the women uh, in particular, there's a much quieter story that's not being told, which is that women are frightened to go out. When I went to Rinkeby in the evening, I was the only female, certainly the only white female. And when I spoke to the ladies, it's because they're terrified of the crime. They're terrified of the gangs. And one particular lady I spoke to, she runs home at night because she's fearful of all the men that gather at night under the bridge where she lives, so they're, they're kept indoors. So it's a really frightening place for a lot of women there, particularly. Well, the, I mean, the irony, of course, is that Sweden is the original feminist success story, and its own government describes it that way as the first truly feminist country, and yet you're saying that mm. Swedish women are afraid to go outside? Mm. Yeah, absolutely, and that was exactly the point that made me kind of mad, you know. I was saying to them, but Sweden's always been the aspiration. You guys have the best maternity leave, the best paternity leave. You're seen as the epitome of a society that's truly evolved. And the funny thing was, after I put up my first article for Mail Online, a lady, a stranger, came over to me in a cafe and she said, you've got to keep going. You've got to keep speaking out on behalf of these women because they have been silenced. And funnily enough, or curiously enough, the lady, let's call her Lucy, that is too scared to go out of her apartment that was broken into last week and she had her car torched, um, she said she was frightened to have her picture taken because of the feminists. Because if she spoke out, she would be labelled a racist and they would hunt her down. So the feminists are now working against the women of Sweden and they call them the extremists now. Feminists are the new extremists in Sweden and they are part of the problem, part of the mafia that is silencing the problem that Trump thankfully spoke out about. Yeah, it's not so different here. I mean, our media, as you know, worked feverishly to downplay any reports there might be a problem in Sweden. They're, they're dishonest and politically motivated, so that wasn't surprising. What is surprising is how many Swedes are apparently afraid to say what they really think about what's happening there. Why is that? Absolutely. There's this absolute belief, 80 years of liberal politicians, there's an absolute belief that Sweden is utopia, and that's the only message you can send. There's absolutely mandatory belief in multiculturalism, and there's an absolute uh, uh, reluctance to understand that when these individuals leave Eritrea, Somalia, Afghanistan, they don't just arrive in Sweden and then miraculously, you know, join the multicultural dream. No, they bring every war, every fight, every hostility with them. And there in Inkeby, in Sweden, you have the Eritreans who hate the Somalians, who hate the Afghanis, and that's just brought with them. And we have the same in Calais. When I went to Calais to address the migrant situation, they're exactly the same. The Somalians don't speak to the Eritreans who don't speak to the Afghanis. And uh, absolutely, Sweden won't acknowledge that. They won't acknowledge they've got a problem because that would mean admitting that everything they've believed in, multicultural right. ideas, are wrong and that they shouldn't have let in 200,000 people in two years. And they're about to let in another 400,000 over the next four years. So this problem is not going away. They'd rather destroy their own country than be called racist.
I recognize that. Katie, it thanks for joining us. Now you're, you're a brave Thank reporter. Thank you very much indeed.